All right, guys, so I'm going to take out Mace today. Yesterday, I was feeding him through the fence, and I really liked our session. He had a few blow-ups, but his eyes were really different, and he stayed in that mindset for a lot shorter periods of time. Mace is certainly not the worst dog we've ever had here, and he's definitely not the most dangerous dog we've ever trained. But if you know anything about Dachis and Malis and the working dogs, they can really be very dangerous in very specific contexts. Doesn't mean that dog still can't really mess you up. Now, I've had some pretty nasty dogs in my time, and I've trained with some pretty nasty dogs. When they were dangerous, they would show those behaviors in the kennel. When they were in a good state of mind and really ready to cooperate and work with you, they wouldn't show you those. They might show somebody else that behavior, but they wouldn't show you the prospective hammer that behavior. And my goal isn't to be a cowboy and, you know, get bit and be the tough guy and whatever else. I leave that to other people. My goal is to actually take this dog and mold him into something functional that I can hand off to somebody else that they can use him in a productive way. Because especially for dogs like Dachis and Malinois, once they do it once, it's in their repertoire. Now, I don't know. Maybe he's chewed up a handler in the past and I wasn't told about it. I wouldn't be shocked, but as far as I know, he has not. So the last thing I want to do is give him that experience where he bites me and he gets away with that. Because then that's always going to be a possibility down the road and it makes the dog that much more dangerous to work with. So I don't care if the dog is the baddest dog in the world or whatever else, I'm always cautious. Now at some point we are gonna be in conflict over some things, but by then I'm gonna have a, a relationship with him hopefully that allows us to go through that without anybody getting hurt. I've taken a lot of really nasty dogs and turned them into something useful and functional. I'd like to say that that's one of my talents. So it's all about kind of establishing that foundation and taking your time. There's no rush. I wanna make him into something useful and functional. So let's go get him. So I can see there when I went to get him out, he had a nice energy. Like the eyes were soft, he wasn't giving me the stink eye. Putting him back in might be different because he really wants to come out, obviously. So putting him back in, I'll have to kind of be a little bit more careful. Now I'm gonna feed him from my hand for the first time and we'll see how it goes after he goes to the bathroom here. So even the jumping, you know, you can misconstrue and say, oh, it's friendly, but that can change really quickly. Now I've already made a mistake of let my slip lead get low on his neck. When your slip lead gets low on the neck, then you don't have leverage on the dog. So if he decides that he's not so happy with me, I don't have as nearly as much leverage to be able to kind of get him off of me if he decides to attach himself to me in some capacity. So that was a big mistake, which I will not make again. Nice. Up, 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 chip. Wow. So we're having a nice time. That's good. I'm going to put him back. We'll end on a good note here. You have to recognize dangers before they occur. So he came in and he decided that for whatever reason, somebody here was going to do my work with him. Arousal always increases danger. Remember what I said about contexts? Some dogs are very context specific about when they become a little bit dangerous. There's food on the ground. Maybe that, that makes him dangerous. There's the possibility of bite work. Maybe that makes him dangerous. He sees a ball. Maybe that makes him dangerous. There's so many different things that can trigger a dog to offer nasty behaviors, right? If he's like any of the other Dutchies I know, there are certain triggers that increase the likelihood that he can be aggressive. So I have to be cognizant of that. So I came in here, he went into a high state of arousal. I have no ability to control the dog because my slip leads down at the base of his neck, okay? I'm trying to get a cash pull on the dog. And I don't know, maybe he's in that state of mind. He turns around, he sees me, he's just gonna smoke me. Because again, we don't really have a relationship yet. People will say I'm being hyper cautious. I'm being hyper cautious because I've seen it go wrong a few too many times. So doing things properly, taking your time, you know, having good little sessions like that, that's the building blocks of success with a dog like Mace.